Rob's child, no investment advice. Welcome to the show where we view financial markets through crystal ball gazing. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. Today's episode, CPI came out today as expected. I won't bore you by reading through all the numbers. This was the last reading of these, the expected and the actual. And across the board, you can see things have come out pretty much exactly as expected. If you saw my show yesterday and you were watching markets this morning, you might have been thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, Rob Child, Rob's child was so right about everything. The news came in exactly as expected and the markets were tanking majorly. But then, like halfway through the day, we just went the other way. And the only way that I could describe the what's going on here is sort of a bear hunting day is what I would call it. You know, there's still enough money out there apparently uh, buying the dip that there's still room to kill more bears. There's still too many bears and we need to get rid of them uh, apparently before we can continue lower. That's sort of what I saw happening uh, today in a nutshell. Remember tomorrow PPI comes out which can also uh, rock markets one way or another. Again, my whole take is that all news is bad news. You know, the way I kind of look at it is the, the tide's going out and, you know, if you, you know, assuming that the good times are when the tide comes in and bad times are when the tide going out, well, you know, you might get some waves while the tide's going out, but you can't stop the tide from going out. When it's going out, it's going out and that's all there is to it. Again, not all markets agree with the bull. And I mean that in more than one way. Daily reminders, the two-year, 10-year Treasury yield curve was inverted for over two years. Currently, uh, very recently, rather, reverted on September 6, 2024, suggesting that the recession is pretty much imminent here. Some rule was triggered, suggesting that unemployment has been rising at an unsustainable pace for the economy, suggesting that the recession has indeed actually already started. The S&P 500 sitting at a P.E. ratio of 29 without major earnings contraction being extremely expensive, while all of these recessionary indicators are screaming recession is coming tells me that we are in for a market crash, a continuation of recent bearish movement. I saw again the Japanese yen carry trade blow up as just the first canister of blow ups. Uh, this is the part of the cycle where everybody, you know, is oh so surprised that, you know, another bank blows up or something else goes majorly wrong. Uh, this is this is what happens in this part of the cycle and we can expect that to continue in my crystal ball reading and I do believe you know some people think that we'll just do a few cuts and the, the market will light right back on fire the economy will boom people will spend money like crazy we might even get inflation back but my I'm on the other side of this I believe that the Fed will not cut fast enough to save the economy Again, I base my thesis on the fact that the two-year, 10-year Treasury yield curve has been inverted for the longest time since right before the Great Depression, which signals to me that we might be headed into a Great Depression again. And I also see pretty much everyone out there, including the Fed, having more fear of inflation than anything else, which tells me that there's too much money and too many people on that wrong side. I think the fear of inflation is overdone and because of this I believe especially the Fed will not be cutting fast enough to save the economy. On to the charts we're starting with the S&P 500 the SPX we have a giant candle well it's a it's a small candle part of the candle but the wick was huge as I mentioned at the beginning uh, earlier in the show we opened and the market was like tanking like crazy like it looked like it was just gonna you know drop through the floor and then later in the day though we bought right back up to the open and then we actually closed in the green closing a percent uh, higher than yesterday's close it's important to remember that you know volatility doesn't just happen when 
markets are dropping, they also happen when markets are going higher. And with a movement this large in one day is extreme. I think it's good to remember on days like today that in the COVID crash, if you remember it, we were down like 10% in one day and then up like 8% the next day. So you, you have movements that go down and you have movements that go up. Nothing really moves in a straight line. I still hold the belief that this head and shoulders pattern should play out. It would make sense to me if it did. It doesn't have to, uh, you know. Maybe there's enough people that believe investing in the S&P 500 is a good idea right now. I personally do not think that. I have puts on SPY. Again, I'm definitely not the only, I'm not alone in expecting more volatility continuing forward. Even though we had the VIX drop today, we still have a elevated October contract with the VIX future term structure curve. The VIX cooled off a bit today. This is the actual VIX. I was able to get some uh, very cheap, very far out of the money uh, soon. Uh, let's see, I guess they expire Friday. Uh, calls on UVXY. Just kind of a shot in the dark, like tiny, tiny, tiny amount of money. But it can, if, if we get, were to get an explosion in the VIX as I expect to happen, you know, it's unbelievable how a really tiny amount of money can turn into a heck of a lot of money um, in those situations, but admittedly that's like the gambling part of my portfolio. I'll admit I have a little bit of FOMO <laughs> um, on what's next, on the next blow up. I, I don't want to miss it. TLT in intraday during the day had gotten up to 101.21 uh, it looked like it, uh, the, you know, when the market was really tanking, uh, there was um, a run to safety to TLT, and then it cooled off, but certainly not getting bearish by any degree. The beautiful thing about TLT and long treasury bonds in this part of the cycle is that there's really two things that can push long treasury bonds higher in value and yields lower. So. If there's a perception that inflation is cooling off as it is, as it has been, and as it will most likely continue to do, um, that helps give a TLT a boost. And if stocks crash uh, and there's a run to safety out of stocks into bonds, uh, rates go down, uh, yields go down, and the value of treasury bonds goes up in both of those you know, for both of those reasons. So I think it's a wonderful place to be, my favorite place to be, uh, obviously. It's why I have over 55% of my own portfolio in long treasury bonds. Not this one, ZROZ and TMF are my favorite. The NASDAQ, obviously a very green day today, 2%. I am not excited about this. I don't see this as a trend change. Uh, obviously, if you're looking at this chart, you can see I still believe that this head and shoulders top is in play, and I'm expecting it to uh, to break down here. I guess one thing going against my narrative is you do have a little bit of a three white soldier uh, going on here, a small green candle followed by two progressively large green candles. So. We might go up a little bit higher from here. I don't think we're going to continue to new all-time highs, but, you know, I guess anything can happen. SMH, important for me to check every day because this thing, I think, leads uh, the markets, you know, because of the amount of speculation in AI and how that sort of uh, the narrative is, like, breaking down here. Uh, you're seeing company after company showing earnings that are not impressing investors. It's... um. It, it looks like it's falling apart to me, uh, but anyway, this head and shoulders top I still think is in play, and once we break this neckline psychologically, I believe we're headed much lower. One of my favorite positions is to be short HYG. This is uh, junk bonds. Again, if inflation is perceived to be going up, then all yields go up, meaning junk bonds go down, meaning that it's more expensive for those you know, lower, uh, or rather higher risk companies to have to 
you know, they have to pay more money on their bonds, and, you know, squeezing them even more, making the prices of those bonds drop even further. And if we get a continuation of a sell-off in equities, as I expect, that also puts pressure on uh, junk bonds. Credit spreads are very tight right now. There's, they can, when they widen, uh, the value of this fund drops. I really like puts on HYG right now, personally. I feel like I might be repeating myself uh, for a while uh, now. We'll see how quickly uh, my thesis plays out, if it does play out the way I expect. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned not all markets agree with the bull, and I mean that in obviously more than one way. There's very obviously nothing bullish looking about the chart of oil, oil uh, being an inside day. Uh, after breaking a major trend line, this is not showing any strength whatsoever. Another favorite leading indicator of mine is wood. And wood also does not agree with the bull. Lastly, even Bitcoin. Showing no sense of bullishness here. Also, not in agreement with the bull. More and more investors have been actually starting to use Bitcoin as sort of a leading indicator. It's become so much more popular lately and accessible to investors, especially speculators. And so when the value of Bitcoin is is going way up, it's saying that, you know, people have money to speculate and they're getting excited and things, you know, can get bullish. And when Bitcoin's not showing so much strength, uh, it kind of says the opposite about uh, at least those participants. And that's all from me and my crystal ball. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Rob's Child.